Baby Rudin is probably one of the most notorious textbooks among mathematicians. It's one of the best books on the fundamentals of calculus, what we call analysis. For someone that has taken a calculus course, the first few chapters seem innocuous. The real and complex numbers, basic topology, numerical sequences and series, continuity, and differentiation. That's basically what makes up a one semester course in this topic, and it all sounds like things we are already familiar with. So what makes this so hard? In some sense, it's the level of detail. You just never realize how much calculus you learned before was just on the surface level. To get an idea, let's look at the first thing Rudin introduces us to. It's the old familiar square root of two. What we are doing here is showing why we need all the sophisticated tools that we are going to be getting into why we need more than just rational numbers. And in particular, there's a gap. But it's much worse than that. So the first bit is pretty basic. We show that the square root of two is not rational. This is effectively showing that rationals are missing critical numbers that come up in very natural settings. Just be careful who you show this to. At least one person lost their life after showing his friends that the square root of two isn't rational. Here's a proof in under a minute. Our goal is to show that the square root of two is irrational. What we do then is we assume by way of contradiction that the square root of two is rational. And that means that there exists some natural numbers a and b, such that square root of two is equal to a over b, with a and b having no common factors. Then what that means is that if we multiply b over and you square both sides, and then we get this, oops, so two. That means that two divides a squared. And since two is prime, and this is a unique property of primes, that means that two must divide a. That means that a can be written as two times m. If we plug two m in for a, we get b squared times two is equal to two m squared, and then that is four m squared. We can cancel that out and we get b squared is equal to two times m squared. And that tells us that two divides b squared, which then tells us that two must divide b because two is prime. Thus, two is a common factor of a and b. And that's a contradiction because we assumed that we made it this way. And so that tells us that square root of two is irrational. There you go, pretty standard. So what's next? Rudin wants to drive the point home by showing that for any positive rational number less than the square root of two, we can find another positive rational number less than the square root of two again, but closer. And the same happens for any rational number bigger than the square root of two. This is a very particular kind of problem. If we wanted a sequence that converged to the square root of two, we could just invoke Karen's method or equivalently use Newton's method on x squared minus two. I've done each of these in older videos on numerical analysis. Rudin takes a different approach, but at its heart, it's not too different. Rudin uses this function f of x is equal to x minus x squared over 2 divided by x plus 2. From a heuristic standpoint, this is a very good choice of function. First of all, if x is the square root of 2, then we see that f applied to the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 2, which makes it a fixed point. Not that I'm admitting that the square root of 2 exists yet. It, we're not there in Rudin yet. And if we take the derivative of f, we see that for all positive x, the derivative is less than one. Even more interesting, if we write it like this, f of x is equal to 2x plus 2 divided by x plus 2, then we see that f actually maps the positive rational numbers less than square root of 2 inside of the same set. So here we have our fixed point. Uh, square root of 2 is sent to square root of 2. And this is for this graph of 2x plus 2 over x plus 2. And what makes this really good is that we see that this interval here, which is going to correspond to our set A, is mapped exactly into this set here. So this square that encompasses square root of two and square root of two, this point on the right-hand side, uh, this basically means that we have a function that is mapping within the same domain. But what's really interesting is that if I were to make the graph, uh, you know, your typical x equals y, or y equals x, if you like, what you see is that anytime we put something in here, if the y value was matching that, it would be right here, but we see that it actually gets to be a little bit larger. So every time we apply f to anything inside of a, it gets to be bigger by about that much. This is one of the core features of this map that uh, Rudin is gonna be using in order to show that anytime we have an element of a that is gonna be whose square is less than two, uh, we have another one that you can get through this mapping. So you can always take any element of a and then uh, find a new element in A by applying F to that. And Rudin's gonna show this rigorously and this is just sort of an intuition. But what's neat is that if you take a look at the set B, which is all of these guys, since they are underneath the Y equals X line, what we're gonna end up doing is you, this would be where they were if it was matched. The actual value it takes is gonna be smaller. So this function 
takes A's and makes them larger and it takes B's and it makes them smaller, but it still stays within the two sets that we want. If we were operating over the reals, then this means that iterations of F should converge to a fixed point of F, which is the square root of two. I made a whole video on fixed point iteration if you want to check that out. But we aren't working with real numbers. Uh, we are working with rationals. So we need to prove this by hand. I'll just do it for those positive rational numbers less than the square root of two, and you can work it out for the other half. Now, since we haven't actually proven the existence of the square root of two yet, we'll state it this differently. Let A be the set of positive rationals whose square is less than two. Now, let's let P be in the set. Rudin tells us that F of P should be bigger than P but less than the square root of two. The first bit is easy to show. P squared minus two is negative, and since P is positive, so is P plus two. We start out with a member of A, which we called P, and then we looked for a Q, such that Q is gonna be bigger than P, and we showed that because this term ends up being negative, and so we're subtracting a negative term from P, and so that means that it is getting larger, hence F of P is bigger. Now, the bit that takes some more work is showing that the square is smaller than two. Actually, it's not that much work. We just need to square this rational function. Playing with polynomials, we see that f of p squared minus two gets us two times p squared minus two divided by p plus two. All right, so now consider f of p squared minus two, which is equal to uh, two times p squared minus two divided by p plus two squared. And you can do this by just multiplying the rational function, etc. and it works out. And so what you see then is that this ends up being negative, just because p itself is in a, which means that since this is positive, we have that f of p squared minus two is negative, which then tells us that f of p squared is less than two. And well, f, if we set q is equal to f of p, then we are done. Rudin dug up just the right function to get us a p squared minus two in both f of p and f of p squared minus two. It's the one thing in the proof that's easy to determine the parity of, or positive or negativeness of. So p squared minus two is still negative. This is one of the things that makes Rudin really beautiful. Sure, without some extra work, it would be hard to appreciate what Rudin did here. But when you come back and you look at it after you have more experience, you just say, damn, that was clever. I would have sucked my guns and attacked this problem with Heron's formula, but I probably would have ended up with a little bit less than Rudin did or with a lot more work than Rudin did. What Rudin has effectively done is tell us that no matter how close we think we are to the square root of two using a rational number, we can get closer but we can also squeeze it from both sides. And when we know a little more analysis, we can come back and use the Bonnet fixed point theorem to show that this actually converges to the square root of two. And if you want to see that theorem, you can watch this video here. In any case, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.